Ooh, an Erodia. Come here. Very nice. All right. Good morning, everybody. It is a pretty perfect, other than a little bit of wind, February day here in the Georgia Piedmont. And uh, it's about time that the stuff around here closer to home starts waking up. The weather has been really good lately, so we're going to explore one of our favorite local areas, try to hike some new parts of this property that I've never been to, and look for potential new snake dens and good rock piles. There's a couple of skinks. These guys definitely aren't ready to wake up yet. They moved around a little bit when I flipped the rock, but they uh, are definitely not surface active yet, so we'll just put this back. Ooh, there's a centipede under there. All right, guys, so underneath this log is something we actually have not seen this year. That right there is a Webster salamander. Look at that guy. For those who aren't familiar, these guys are superficially similar to a redback, but they have very nuanced pattern differences and pretty specific habitat preference. They like these dry areas. Yeah, I'm really surprised we haven't seen more of these this winter. This is the first one we've seen uh, all winter long, and it's effectively spring now, so really really odd that these things have been as absent as they have along with redbacks we haven't really seen many redbacks either there's another webster eye from the next log over hopefully these will be common today normally they're common anytime we come out into this type of habitat but this year they've just been kind of absent and i couldn't tell you why look at all these webster eye when you get into them these things can be super common there were at least five or six under this log there was one that went in this hole too all right, guys, well, other than the skinks and Webster salamanders, it seems pretty dead out here. So I think we're going to probably go to a nearby spot and try to flip some tin and check up on it. Make sure nothing needs to be moved uh, before spring. Because a lot of times things will grow up or get blown around by the wind or moved by people or animals. And we just need to make sure that a lot of our stuff is secure and ready for spring. So... We're gonna stop by there. Maybe we'll see something under that tin. And if not, we'll at least uh, be able to get some work done in regards to the future, so. All right, well, the next spot produced a snake uncharacteristically fast. Nice little ring neck. Very healthy looking for uh, February, as many of the snakes have been this year. But normally it's a good sign if we're seeing ring necks here. So I'm gonna put the GoPro on and flip the rest of this stuff on camera, but we'll let this little dude go. There's another ring neck. All right, there's ring neck number two at our first stop at our second spot of the day. We've got a bunch more tin to flip here, so. I normally never see anything at this spot, so seeing anything here is pretty cool. Um, we have a lot of the better stuff ahead of us still, but could end up just being a really good day for little fossorial snakes, or we could be in for a good flipping session. We will see. Oh, a rat snake. Finally. The first snake of the day that's not a ring neck and the first snake I've ever found at this spot. All right, well, cool to finally get a snake at this barn. I've been coming to this place for years now and have not seen anything until today. And I'm gonna show you actually the piece of tin he was under is perfect and I'll show you why in a second, but I wanted to give you one look at him here in the open before we let him go. Beautiful, probably last year's baby rat snake. They just had a really good start and was able to secure a lot of food before winter. And he is, of course, in great shape going into spring. Probably his first spring. All right, little dude, you ready to go back to your tent? I'll show you guys real quick why this piece of tin is so good. My GoPro is just sitting here on top of it. So that's where he was. But if we look up under this bottom piece, that is probably where he spent the winter. Look at that hole. But yeah, very cool to see. Here you go. I'm glad we got a non-ring neck on the day, even if it was just one. We still have a fair bit of stuff to flip, though, so there's a chance we could find something else. Next piece of tin over from the rat snake had this nice little southeastern five-line skink under it. Not sure if I've photographed the species in this area before, um, but they are kind of patchily distributed, it seems, and tend to be a pretty uncommon lizard as far as lizards in Georgia go. We kind of have the uber rare lizards, and then we have a lot of really common lizards, and there's not many in between, but I'd say these guys are probably one of those in-between species. Definitely locally common, though, in some areas, especially in the coastal plain. Oh, he's going to bite me. Ow. 
Come on, dude. I'm gonna put you back in a second. Just wanted to show you to the people. Very pretty lizard, though. All right, Mr. Southeastern Five Lined, here you go. Straight under the wood. So this is what I mean when I say I need to do some tin work, because these two pieces had not come off the barn yet previously, but after this winter storms, they were loose and I was able to pull them off and we'll be able to put them out and hopefully find snakes under them. I found a lot of cool snakes right here around this barn over the years, but a lot of the tin has been on the roof until now. So it's finally starting to really collapse and a lot of the tin is becoming accessible. We'll just sit this stuff out right here beside the barn and hopefully find some snakes under it in the spring or later in the spring, I should say. We got two more sets of 10, three more. This is one of them. All right, lots of ants. And mice, look at those guys. Bowls, I guess. Good king snake food. All right, everybody, that's gonna be it for today. It was, uh, well, it could have been worse. I'm just happy to see snakes and uh, did accomplish a lot of 10 work today, which was one of the big objectives. So probably gonna wrap today up here. I will have to continue this episode next time I get out, which will probably be tomorrow. So I'll see you guys then. Good morning, everybody. I am currently headed down into the coastal plain a little bit where it's supposed to be a little bit warmer today. There is a good chance of rain, um, but it's March, finally. One of my favorite months of the year all around for snake hunting and just being outside. Spring is going to be in full swing soon and it's already headed that way pretty quickly. We can pretty much expect to see snakes on any outing from here on out, hopefully. Uh, I don't want to jinx things before we get into it today, uh, especially considering the weather isn't the best, but I am pretty optimistic about how the day is going to go and the rest of the week, so... The plan today is to get boots on the ground in new areas that we haven't hiked in an area that is fairly familiar to us. So the goal today is to find new stuff to flip, maybe find some new stump holes that we've never hiked, and hopefully find some snakes. Man, the green tree frogs at this spot are just weird. Almost every one I find is some degree of brown, and this one's even almost white colored on its back. Very odd. That was a weird way to find our first snake of the day. I flipped this big piece of wood and kind of glanced inside it and noticed a gray rat. Very pretty. I'm not sure we're gonna be able to get him out though, seeing as he's inside of this giant block. All right, so I'm right beside where we flipped the uh, rat snake inside the piece of wood. And under here is another one. This one we can actually get a look at. Mine is really cool. Big, big rat snake. This guy is way bigger than the first one. Looks quite a bit different too. He's just pancaked up under this tire, so we'll probably just leave him right there. Well, we've got a great look at him just by flipping the tire, so no need to pull him out or anything. Second rat snake of the day, first snake we've gotten a good look at. All right, this one had a green snake last time and has had green snakes before that too. Oh, the tiny guy's still here. We saw him a couple months ago. I'm assuming that's the same little rough green that we saw Back in, I guess it was the first snake outing of the year in January. Cool to see he's still hanging out. Well, I wasn't expecting our first snake that's actually out today to be my first ever Eastern King Snake in Alabama. But sure enough, there it is. <laughs> Holy cow. Dude, you are really, <laughs> you're not in the best shape. And you're definitely not in the type of shape to be so spunky with me. Look at this guy. He is just completely disgruntled at my existence all right we'll leave this thing alone i feel bad for it because it is so blistered up but i do think more than likely the snake will shed a lot of that out and it's probably a consequence of where he decided to spend the winter if i had to guess so you're gonna get your burrow flooded and you're gonna get blistery every time you decide to hibernate in a floodplain so but yeah finally first eastern king snake in alabama it could be nicer could be healthier but i'm not going to complain Every time I visit this area, well, I don't know what is piping off over there, but I wish it would stop. <laughs> Every time I visit this area, I think it looks so rattlesnakey, and I have yet to find a cane break here or anywhere near here. I know they have to be here. I just can't find them. Today isn't a fantastic day for them to be out, but um, I wouldn't be shocked if they're out today. I just would be kind of surprised. That's a big rabbit. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Just chilling over there, eating something. 
it really doesn't feel super snaky out here, but we're gonna hit a couple of spots in Georgia on our way home and see if there's some snakes out there. Try to flip a little bit of tin. I definitely have more hopes for the tin than anything, but at least it isn't windy today. There's a nice broad head. Whoa, relax. <laughs> Thought he was gonna flop out of my hand for a second. But you can see this thing is measurably bigger than uh, any of our other skinks. When you see one this big, you can tell pretty easily you're looking at a broadhead without counting any scales. All right, guys, just flipped a tire that I've never found before, and underneath it were a couple of narrow mouths and another green snake. Very, very pretty little green snake. Actually, a fairly large one compared to the last one, at least. Gorgeous. All right, I pulled this guy and all the narrow mouths out so I could put the tire back safely, but beautiful, beautiful snake as always. We will uh, let him go back under. Hopefully there will be some snakes out at this spot. Really has not been much active today at all. Everything's been undercover with the exception of the one king snake. All right, I just flipped this pretty little dude under a tire that's actually in the water. There's very little dry land under there, but he was sitting on the one little spot that was dry. Very pretty little guy, look at that. We uh, haven't gotten too many good looks at this species yet this year, so to see one today is pretty nice. And also, we don't really see this size class very often. He's kind of in that transitional phase where he's losing a little bit of his pattern and is becoming solid colored like most adult uh, plain-bellied water snakes are. Very cool. He's doing a little bit of a tail curl. Oop, wow, this guy is ready to go. All right, all right, dude, here you go. Here's your tire. Here's your tire, don't bite me, go back. What a goofball. There he goes. There's a lot of anoles out all of a sudden, so I'm pretty surprised we haven't seen any snakes out in the open since these guys are out. Normally lizard activity is at least a decent indicator that snakes could be out. Not today though, apparently. They're all undercover. Finally, a couple snakes sitting out in the open. There's a pair of cotton mouse right here. Kind of far away. I'm not sure if we'll be able to get a better look than that, but snakes are basking, finally. It only took until three o'clock in the afternoon. All right, I've seen quite a few more of these, but a lot of them have escaped before I could get any video. But there is another cottonmouth. I think I've seen three others since we saw the two basking together. This guy's barely visible. But there's another plain belly. This one is big and in shed. Ooh, Nerodia. Come here. Very nice. All right, relax, buddy. <laughs> Very pretty little erythrogaster. All right, well, there's our tin Nerodia for the day. I've only flipped this tin once before, oh, and last time it had a cotton mouth. Needless to say, this guy is not, not quite as intimidating. <laughs> he is very pretty, though. Look at that. Great coloration on him. We'll let him go and flip the rest of this stuff. Oh, there's a cotton. Wonder if that's the same one we saw last time. All right, here's a look at this guy up close before I put his tin back down. Just gonna try to leave him undisturbed since he's chilling right there. Very nice. All right, everybody. Well, I think that's gonna be it for today. It's starting to get kind of late and uh, the snakes never really did come out like I was hoping they would. We did get a few cotton mouse out basking here at the end of the day, but it was mostly flipping today. Can't complain about it. We did accomplish our main goal of the day, which was to find our first eastern king snake in Alabama. We just don't spend a lot of time in the range of eastern king snakes within Alabama. But yeah, lots of snakes today, just not as much surface activity as I was hoping. I do think I'm probably going to wrap this episode up here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Hopefully you're enjoying spring as much as I am. All right, everybody, I am plant shopping today for the yard with Caitlin, and uh, not even herping, it's not even nice out today. It's like 50 something degrees. And uh, just spotted our first garter snake of the year right here in the nursery. Look at that. Caitlin almost stepped on it. We were just walking around and suddenly there was a snake. Really was not expecting anything to be out today. That's why we're doing this instead of herping.
But uh, first garter snake of the year, very cool. We'll just uh, let him continue to live his best life here in the uh, native plant nursery. Let that tongue go in. All right, dude.